Hi, and welcome back to Sticks and Strings. I'm Naomi. I'm Beth. I'm Eve. And it is the Happy New Year 2023. Yay. When you're seeing this, you are in the future, and it is already 2023. And we are very happy to see 2022 yeah. behind us. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what, what the past has three stuff. years, 2020, 2021, 2022, just not good. Not great. Yeah. Not great. Not great. So we're happy to be in the new year and... Um, Doing all the things that are coming up. I was thinking about, what am I going to do this year? <laughs> I was thinking I should do whip go with y'all. Yeah. And get all my knitting whips out. And you have a few days out. left. Yeah, yeah, figure it out. Um, so am we I going are, first? We already have the calls. She's yeah, gonna, can. She's going to do them on the 25th every, of every oh, month okay. now. Yeah, so. Well, that's good. I can sort of finagle it and yeah. plan what I want to do. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going first. So I am working on my my symphony shawl. I've showed it. This is the this is the right side of it. I showed it last time. Sorry, Beth. So I'm working on uh, this end over here. I am almost done. It's beautiful. So I, my goal is to get it done by tonight because <laughs> it's <laughs> Thursday the 20 what is today 28 29 that is 29 29 30 31. yeah because I want to wear it Saturday night and it's Thursday night so I'll put a note right here whether I got it finished or not <laughs> but I have um I was doing this last section so um this part, sorry this laughing me with a needle sorry this part right here was like it said it needed high contrast and it called for colors B and C and my B color is the gray and my C color is this uh, variegated or, or speckled yarn here and so I was like I'm just gonna do it B and C the way it says and I think it's enough contrast but it really wasn't <laughs> <laughs> so for the first two rounds it's six rounds total I'm talking about this gray section right here I'll put a close-up photo here for the first two two rounds of this, I used the color C, which is this purple, and it, it really wasn't good contrast. So for the next two uh, repeats of the pattern, I used black and gray, and that showed up really nice. You can see it right here. And then for, and then I thought, well, to be to make it look patterny, I'll I'll use the purple again. So I went purple, black, purple. So that's my own design element. And then I did this section, which you won't be able to see because if it was a solid color, you'd probably see it better. There's actually Braille oh, yeah. knitted into this <laughs> section right here. Um, and because she always likes to, I think, I don't know if you remember, if you've been watching for a while, when we did the Sharon Show shawl, there was uh, Morse code uh, knitted into that one. And this one, she knitted Braille into it. And it says... It says gobshite free zone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't really see it, and um, you can kind of feel it, but because um, mm -hmm. you know Braille is a is a system of six dots, two 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 columns of three dots each, and the combinations make letters, and so that's how she she did it with little pearl stitches uh, in this stockinette section. So you really, in this, especially in this variegated yarn, you can't see it. But I was like, oh, well, whatever. I just want to get done. So I think I have like two more rows of this variegated. And then I'm switching to the purple purple, which is this, this solid purple color here. And I think that's how it ends. And then I'll be done. So I have one more, basically one more section to do. And I'm going to put my big six foot table out in the garage to block it. Hopefully if I finish it tonight, it can block all day tomorrow. Uh, if not, I have to finish it tomorrow night and block it overnight, Friday night. And hopefully that by the time I leave for work at 4.30, it'll be dry. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish know, me it's pretty well. cold and humid. <laughs> Wish me well. I know, I know. 
And um, so anyway, that's the story with this. So that's what I've been doing. And the other thing I've been doing, oh, I have a finish. Hmm. I have a finish finish, completely finished. Like ready to gift finish because uh, we'll talk about stories why I didn't give this on Christmas Eve the way I was supposed to. But this is Rachel's cape. Oh, it's so pretty. So it it um it overlaps at an angle. I'm putting your cape on, Rachel. <laughs> They're for you. It overlaps at an angle, and the buttons button like that, and so it's all the buttons are very nice. Yeah. This, yeah. this was the right choice. Yeah. And um, you remember last week I was deciding. Yeah. And it, it has that beautiful flair. And um, it yeah. came out really, really, and I'm really happy with it. So, yeah, it looks good. Um, so, by the time you see this, you will have already gotten it. Because we're going to get together on, on New Year's Eve. So, that is, doesn't that look gorgeous? Those buttons, they're perfect. So, yes. Anyway, um, so that is my finish. Finish. Love it. And then the other thing I worked on all week was this. Remember that hat, that double layered cuffed oh, hat? Yeah. So I'm almost done with the band. So these are the ear flaps. It actually goes, technically this is the right ear. So it goes like this around and it's gonna it's gonna wind up meeting in the back and so it covers the ears mm -hmm. and it's a double layer thickness so and once I once I finish the band then I'll uh, come here I'll pick up both whoop, pick up both um, I've got hair on my face now <laughs> sorry <laughs> pick up both layers of this band together like this and then knit the knit the top of the cap. So that has been going very, very well. It is garter stitch on either side. And then this is a slip stitch row. You knit the right side and on the wrong side you slip them with a with the yarn on this side. And so it creates that. It just naturally wants to fold over. Um, so this is my own hand spun yarn. It's alpaca and sheep's wool together. This is a provisional cast on. I've talked about this before, but you use a crochet hook to make uh, this cast on. And then uh, once, then you can take off this waist yarn and you have live stitches here. And then you take these two ends like this and you uh, weave them together with Kitchener stitch. So then it makes a tube and then it'll fold on itself and, and on, and, and, and. <laughs> so this is what I've been working on, kind of my, what I consider bus knitting, where I don't have to think too hard. And instead of using my, <laughs> instead of using my knit companion, I've been old school in it with check marks, tick marks on the, on the pattern, just because I can take this with me to work or to the doctor's office and, and it's not so complicated as that shawl. Uh, this this shawl I'm working on. So that's my other accomplishment. I hope to get that done by the 10th, uh, by the 9th, so that Hannah can take it back to Boston with her. Um, she's the only person who needs a hat that warm. Um, <laughs> but I've been freezing here. It's been cold. It's so cold. I was so cold that I wore socks on my feet in the house. What? <laughs> yeah. That is very cold. Yeah. Um, I had my little I, and I, put, I pulled a sweater on oh in, in, in the house. Yeah. yeah. I know it's just so cold. But um Yeah, I but had the some, other some oh. fuzzy slippers that mom I guess mom and dad bought me a couple years ago, a few years ago. Um they're little you know, the little slide on yeah. slippers and they're they're you know, fuzzy. Yeah. Um, and I had left them in my closet for, for ages because, you know, I never use them. And the other day I pulled them out. Yeah, yeah I took oh. mine out. Um and um, uh, what was I going to say? Mine have like a memory foam, so that was yeah. nice. Because mm -hmm. I was baking one day, and I'm like, my feet are killing me. Um, but, oh, the other accomplishment in, in knitting uh, that I have is I taught Hannah to helix knit. So she wanted to make something. She's like, I don't know. I want. She's like, I want to be good at knitting. And I'm like, the only way to be good at knitting, like violin, is 
What? Practice. So, mm-hmm. um, she's like, what should I make? Should I make a hat? Should I make... And I'm like, well, like, what do you want? She was like, I, I want a scarf. And I'm like, okay. So then we talked about, you know, what kind of stitching she wanted. I'm like, do you want just mindless knitting? Do you want to have to think about it? You know, where the pattern kind of crowds everything else out of your brain, which is a nice break for your brain. Or do you want to just literally sit and knit while you watch TV? Because that's a whole other type of pattern, you know, whether or not you have to think about it. And she really wanted, she kind of wanted like a flat stockinette stitch, which is just, you know, like, like, um, like, like, like this, just very flat feeling. And I'm like, well, you, you can't make a scarf like that because it will curl on itself. You ha- it has to have stabilization on the sides. So we talked about whether she wanted to do like a garter stitch edge and then the stockinette in the center, but it still, I don't think it would lay as flat as she was wishing. So then I, we started talking and I was like, well, you could, she had never really knit anything in the round before. So I said, well, you could knit with a small circumference needle and knit it in the round. And then when you're done with it, it will, you can like flatten it and just sew the ends together. And she wants to put fringe and stuff on it. So, um, but then she was talking about doing stripes. And I was, cause I had, I had two colors of blue, a dark blue and a, and a lighter blue. And I was like, well, you could, I said, you could do helix knitting. So what helix knitting is, is especially you can do three, you can do any number of colors you want, but it works, it starts working well with three colors and then you can add on more if you want. But what it is, is um, you knit in a circumference and you have, you cast on however many stitches in multiples of the colors that you want. So for instance, she had three colors. She had a dark blue, a, a light blue and a white. And so I had her cast on 90 stitches and I gave her a hat size needle that, that would hold that comfortably. She cast on 90 stitches and then with the dark blue and then she started knitting, she knit 30 and we added the light blue and then she knit 30 and she added the white. And what that does is then after the initial first, after the second round, basically, you, well, you, anyway, it, 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 you start going around and every time you run up to the, the next yarn that's hanging, you pick it up and knit with it till you run to another one and you go in a spiral like this. And what it winds up doing is it makes perfect stripes Mm -hmm. and you don't have a jog where you change color or anything like that. So basically it's just a spiral. But the way it works with the three colors, you, it's imperceptible when you switch colors. And so they, they turn around, but when you just flatten it, it looks like stripes. And I'll put a picture here of her knitting. She, it's really beautiful and it's coming out well. I don't know that with just the spare yarn I had laying around, if she has enough to take her for a full scarf, scarf length. So sometime this week I may have to go and get her some more. Um, I wonder if she saved those labels. I bet she didn't. Um, just so I can know what colors they are. I mean, I know they won't be the same dye lots, but whatever. Um, the one is like a cream. The one is a, like it's called, uh, not navy blue, uh, West Point is the one, dark blue. And then the, the lighter one, I can't remember what it's, I think it's cornflower, something like that. So I have to, I'll have to get her some more, I think. We'll see how she, but she's like, I'm going to get this done before I leave on the 9th. Oh, she's <laughs> leave on the 10th, but you know, she wants to yeah. have it done so she can give me my needles back. So I'm like, you're going to have to mail me my needles. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so her goal is to have it done and she's been doing, you know, uh, several inches every day. She's just, it, it's good for her. And it, and, but she has very loose gauge. I was like, if you ever try to make a sweater, you're going to have to really measure your gauge because I gave her a particular size needles, but her, her stitches are very loose, you know, and, and that's mm-hmm. fine. And for a scarf, it doesn't matter, uh, except, she, you know, um, but, uh, but I was like, Ooh, girl, you knit <laughs> loose. I knit, I have the opposite problem. So, but anyway, so that's my yarn adventures for the week. Who's going next?
I have one. Okay. I gotta get started on this shawl. Yeah. Um, so, I'm working on my last whip go of 2022. I think today, Thursday, is my 10th day. I'm not sure. Um, let me just... That doesn't this. add up. Wouldn't it be the last day of the month? No. Because it no. started on what day? On the, on the 20th. Is today the 30th? No. Today is the 29th. 29th. I thought you had 10 days. Yeah. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. It's 10 days. <laughs> because math. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, because you count the 20th. As one day. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So anyway, this is Gray Wolf. And... Um, I know you can't remember, but up here there was nothing in this corner, so now there is something. Move it, move and it to the side of the snowman. Oh, Get up sorry. Here. Yeah. And across the top here, I added, you know, some stitching. So um, there was a little bit, I think, above the ear. No, I added all that. All of this above the ear. Yeah, it looks the same. I added. And all down here, this stuff. So, you know, it's just a pixelated, you know, edging and I so I added uh, one uh, one color in over here so I was kind of wanting to not be as much of a color completist as I usually am because this is very hard to you know find your way around and I wanted to like fill in this this empty corner up here but I didn't you know <laughs> so I'm now I'm down here in the weeds you know try to to, I'm doing more stitching here on the side of his of his muzzle, but so uh, yeah, and and actually you know like I said I found in the in the pattern that I have, you know I was trying to mark off what stitches I had done and 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 there was a whole bunch of, I thought well I could do that color because I haven't done that and then I was as I was stitching in here I thought yes I have done that already that's already in here, so yeah. So I, I guess I haven't kept up with marking it all. And like I said, this is the, the, the booklet that it was in. This is what down here, this endangered species. Um, there's puffins and a polar bear and some trumpeter swan. And I think this is a, some kind of hawk. Are they all as pixelated as that one? <coughs> probably, probably. Which means you'll probably um, never there's a. I didn't say I was ever going to do them. The <laughs> cheetahs and a, a mountain lion. So I I was doing this this gray wolf down here, but <clears throat> it may you may be able to find it on you know on eBay or something, but because it's like it's old, this from nineteen eighty eight. But uh, the other thing is the uh, whip go for next year. Um, the numbers have already been called for January. But this is my whip go board. So it looks a little different. Last year I just did strictly whips and I had so many days, whatever. But this year I'm trying to do it differently because I have a bunch of, of finishes that aren't FFO'd. So what I have is um, for each day of, that's called, I have an FFO to do a whip that has just short goals. I usually, most of them have six days. I, there's a couple in here that say finish because I know I was close to finishing. Like this, like Kitty Kitty. Um, it's the one that has two cats and a tree and all that. And all that's left to do on it, I think, is the, the framing around it. So I could probably and hopefully finish that. And there's one other one I think on, was on, on here that was finished, that was finished. But so, so I have an uh, FFO and then a whip and then the, uh, then a, a new start. And the new starts, I did not put anything specific. I just put new start on there. And so I'm, I'm thinking that I will write on the whip go list what, whatever I decide to start. So, um, so the numbers that were called were number six and number 10. And so my number six is Sleepy Hollow. And this was a Italian modernist uh, mystery sal. 
uh, so some time ago, I don't remember when, 2018, I don't know, something like that. So I'm doing, the, I finished the part one, so this is part two of Sleepy Hollow, and um, the goal on it, again, is only six days, so it's quite a bit of stitching to go on there. Um, but maybe I'll get close to a finish, I don't know. Because um, the framing is already done, and the first part of the stitch of the wording, spooks all gather for a jamboree, dancing with a fiendish glee. Maybe it is done. The wording is done, and there's just but all the all the pictures have to be done there. So, so that one. And you're not doing them in a big panel like this. You're no, doing separate. No, they're, uh, they're separate right now. They're just all connected still, but supposedly. I'm I'm wanting to do uh, the drums uh -huh. for the finished run there, but you know, supposedly, supposedly. So I don't know. That's what you're supposed. Remains to, to be seen. I see. And then the other whip I have, um, I have on on the number ten uh, for whips. I have rabbit rabbit and. I said part one because I, because uh, I've started all of them, you know, as each month has gone by, but I haven't, I've only finished a few of them last, the year, not this year, 2022, but 2021 for a cross stitch camp, I did the January rabbit rabbit. And so that's finished and I have to get that out of the, it's in the, in the garage. Uh, because so, that's, I think, well, that's one of my FFOs, <laughs> is the January Rabbit Rabbit. And then I thought I had finished March and April, but I guess I must have finished February and March um, because April is in here, in the stack. So this part one is going to be April, May, June, and July. I only have six days to do them, but some of them are almost done. Some of them are barely started. So um, this is the April... Rabbit, rabbit, and there's just one little rabbit. This is all I got done on this one. So that's not going to get done. And uh, May, again, is not going to get done because I just did one little corner of it. This is, in share, this is, is sharing a fabric with another month there. And then uh, this is June. And this one is... Uh, About a third of the way done. <laughs> and it's it's sharing a fabric with another month. And then uh, this is July. And this is also just a little bit barely done on it. So these are all my number sixes. And then the two FFOs I have. Uh, I mean number ten, I don't know. Uh, the two FFOs I have are are uh, my oldest remaining whip, Midnight Meow. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna do like a little. Uh, I love that one. A little stand up or a frame, little frame or something it's very like that. Cute. So yeah, this one I is a, it's a Jan Lin kit um, that I purchased years ago. I don't know in the early '90s, I guess. And then this one, um, I don't remember when I started it. I've had this pattern for a while. Wow, I don't even remember. But I, but I did this one um, oh, in 2017. You? This is the the one I did uh, when I came back. I think I had already started it, maybe, but I finished it when you came back from what? From the surgery, from my brain surgery. Oh, this I worked on this piece. So, as a matter of fact, it was because of this piece. I think. No, maybe not. That you started uh, watching Floss too? Yeah. It wasn't maybe it wasn't this one. I think it was the tiger one that I did for Hannah. Oh. That had about it had the it, it said something about couching and I didn't know what that was. So Naomi said, Well look online, I'm sure there's some tutorial about it somewhere and that's where I kept seeing all these references to floss tube. Oh floss tube blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, <laughs> What is floss tube? And here we are. Here we are. So anyway, um, so uh, I don't know how I'm going to finish this exactly, but because it's big, 
It's pretty. I was thinking originally a pillow, but I don't know. You should put them in frames and hang them up on your in your bedroom so I you could. can enjoy them. Yeah. Except Puck has a very strict no hanging policy. He was yeah, always you need to he was always knocking his, stuff. His he was always knocking stuff off the wall, or he's I could see him staring at things like how can I get the how can I knock that down? That one seems so nice. I think it belongs in a frame. Yeah. So, but so uh, yeah, this so. one, you know, a stand up or something, you know that I understand that one, but that one I think it's, it's, it's really, yeah, it's really yeah, beautiful. Really yeah. So you this so these are the two FFOs that I have to do. Uh, for this month, and the nice thing about it is that you know it, it, it'll only take me you know uh, you know a day or two at each one. It you know just depending on how elaborate you know I want to be or whatever. It's really but pretty. once you know once I iron them and maybe you know put a little uh, interface on the back or whatever, and then you know put them on some kind of something and put a frame, it shouldn't take that long. Um, even pieces that I have that are, um, like my Western Biscornu is, is one of my, um, FFOs. And so, you know, that's really not that hard to do. It's just a little, you know, slip stitch around the, the thing and it's, you know, they're, they're pretty small. And so again, most of the FFOs that I have are gonna, only going to take maybe two days at most. And so, out of the 30 days of a month, you know, um, I'll have, I'll have like, say, four days to FFO two projects, and then 12 days to work on the whips, and that leaves me the rest of the month for two new starts. And so, the year, next year, I, I imagine I'll have a bazillion FFOs. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's my plans for the month. And I think that's it. Move my giant piles over there. <laughs> okay. So uh, I have a finish. Nativity Berry. Yay. Uh, Erica Michaels. I absolutely love this. I love the way it came out. But when I was finishing it, I said, should I put sparkly thread in the angel's wings? No, because then if I do that, I should put sparkly thread on all the white. No, but the angels should be different. Maybe they should be even sparklier. And then I said, stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful just like this. And it I doesn't see? need... Anything else? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, from robots, see any, feel any? Um, sorry, that's the way my son used to say. Um, I finished one berry, so I started another one. <laughs> Winter berries. Um, because I'm not getting the called for in here, uh, I'm just going to, I have so many threads that I'm sure I have something that'll do for, for all of these colors. And so I, um, this berry right here, it's on a light blue flab fabric with white. Most people that I've seen do this berry mm -hmm. have changed either the fabric or the color yeah and most have gone the route route I've gone dark mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I chose uh, I just looked at all the blues I knew I wanted to do it on this uh, this is fabric fair flare blue as is this um, 16 count Ada and uh, I just looked at all the blues and I chose Mermaid's Fin Classic Colorworks um, to go with this fabric. And I just love that combination. Sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is my start. And this one is called, I don't know if it's called Winter or something. It just says Winter Burr with a whole bunch of snowflakes. 
which is why it probably wasn't white, you know, because it has a whole bunch of snowflakes. My snowflakes are going to be blue. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, because I could make it two color, yeah. but I'll just make it one color. So that is my new start, and that's what I'm working on right now. Now, my uh, last whip go call for um, for the year, uh, hands-on design, I hear the bells, and my goal was 10 days on this, which I have met, but I will probably continue to work on it some um, until New Year's. I may not work on it actually New Year's. I generally stitch until midnight from <laughs> 6 or 7 until midnight and I think I'm going to be busy <laughs> um, but this is my progress and it's I'm so really pretty. pleased with um, how quickly it's stitching so is that the drum pa uh, pattern? yeah it's the drum pattern That's so, nice. so I decided sorry hair on this and my luck I'll stitch it in there <laughs> I mean like all the cat hairs I've knit into this yeah so <laughs> this comes the pattern is one page and then another page and so I said I'm gonna try to get one page done and so it ends in I have the picture here but not the not the I think the B right here and then it has um, down here a little village and this is half of a bell and the rest of the bells are on this side and then the other half of the bell so it's maybe this big right here mm -hmm. so I think it's doable to get the letters and the garland at top I don't know about the house the houses but it's only this high so it stitches up pretty pretty fast so we'll see I'll work on this later tonight and and see where that goes and then earlier today I was working on um, winter reindeer. Now I do not have this on my whip go board. I have too many whips. I had to, I had, I had to choose some. <laughs> um, this is where I am so far, and I switched back to white. Um, I'm gonna put the. Uh, I put in the last snowflake on this side and I'm going to put in the the deer's tail and his little spots and he's got snowflakes as a garland around his around his neck which I think is really cute um I probably won't get a lot further on this this year um but I enjoy working on it right now I took it with me to an appointment of my sister's, and apparently I'm, you know, going back in a little while. Uh, this is not in my. Um, normally, this is not my my um, out and about stitching. I have a bag of stuff of smaller things, but since I wanted it closer to done, I I decided to take it, and I may do that again, or I may get my other out and about stitching in. So my whip go pulls for January. Uh, Hands-on design summer basket, it's three. I finished one oh, yeah. with cross stitch camp. That's so pretty. And it has these other two. Now I don't know which one I'm going to choose to do next. I'm leaning toward this one right That's here. Really pretty. Hi, dog. I, I love all three of them. Dog. What's the matter? And I, uh, I'm not sure if I have enough fabric for all three here, 
So hopefully I can find more of his color. I might have already purchased it. I keep buying fabric, I don't know why. And then, uh, I won't get this done in the, in the 10 days, but I can dream because I really want to start the autumn one. And the winter one is coming out in January. But look at those. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, can I see them? Mm -hmm. Let's go. They look like Michelle quilt patterns. Rogue. Where's Rogue? They look like quilt patterns. Rogue came to see me for no reason. They're so beautiful. I love them. Oh, do the bear, the bear claw. Well, I have to do those first. Oh. I love... I thought about okay. doing a bear claw quilt. This one on the bottom oh, yeah. left is a bear claw. Mm -hmm. Is that where you're... Oh my gosh, how cute. That's very cute. And then I just finished working on this for Whipgo this year, and it got called again for next year. Sweet. Uh, this is Cute Boots by Joe Gattenby for X's and O's. Cute boot and scooby, scooby what? Cute boot and scooby. And I'm doing this on... Uh, Oh, and this hands-on design is 14 count, and I can't remember the name of that color. It looks mint green to me, but that's not the name they give it. Hmm. And I thought, you know, this this looks like it'll it'll go really well with the red, white, and blue. I don't know why, but it does. It looks good. Uh, this is 28 count even weave that I dyed myself. And I'm really happy to be working on this again. I don't know how far I will get in 10 days. Uh, maybe his body, probably not his boots. Um, this is very, you know, one stitch here and one stitch there kind of thing, which does take a little bit more time. And then there's the puddle that he's dancing in, but this guy is so cute. So I like Whip Go because it, it makes me go, oh yeah, I need to take that out and work on it, so. And my last whip. <laughs> is my so gnome tree. Cute. And I started on this uh, branches. And while it's not difficult, it's frustrating because you're you're crocheting on them and I have to hold it like this and it keeps sliding and then the, the thread slides off of the needle because you're holding it weird and uh, I wonder why it didn't have you make them while you were going. You know what I mean? Like it seems like it would have been easier. Yeah. But I don't know. Because you, then you would have had to stitch up underneath them so maybe it wouldn't have been. But it, 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 and it's not difficult. It's just, uh, you know, uh, yeah, because it, it or as we because say, of the shape. As we say in the fiber word, it's fiddly. <laughs> and because of the shape of this, I'm constantly dropping it. Then what, then it makes me drop my needle. Then it make you know, drop, this thing rolls away. And you need more yarn. I, I, I got it already. Oh, okay. I went and bought it um, <laughs> before I started that. I was going to say, maybe the integrity of the shape is better when it's made solid like that. Uh, and and you know, and she you had it. she had it holding on her hand like this, and I think hers was smaller. Uh -huh. uh, maybe she used a smaller thread or something, uh, yarn. And, so cute. But I, I I like the height of it. I want it to. <laughs> what I should have done when I was filling it right as it was at the end was get some of that um, lizard litter. Mm to make it heavy on the bottom, yeah. to make sure it would stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's already, it's already closed it's on the bottom. Closed up. Yeah. 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 So, it's so cute though. That would be really cute. Yeah. I'm just going to have to flatten that bottom out to make sure that it doesn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm excited about this now. I am keeping this in my wonky bag. Oh, your wonky bag. <laughs> I like your wonky bag. So, uh, I don't have the 
little jingle bells. I, think, I don't know what I did with those. They're somewhere. I don't know that I'm going to work on this a whole lot more after the new year, just because I have my hand in too many pies right now. But I do want to get it done. Uh, so we'll see. It's not, as I said, it's not difficult. It's just... <laughs> So that's me. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. So we did mail out the prizes. Yeah. They're on their way. Are you we, we did one of them a couple of days ago and the other uh, the other two just today. So uh, the post office told me that those, uh, the ones I mailed today, should arrive by Tuesday-ish. The so. 3rd of January? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, congrats to our winner. Yes. That was fun. Yeah, that, that was. was a lot of fun. And then, I have a story about all the Southwest <laughs> snafus. You know, um, Phoenix sure is an area. you all have your own stories. Yeah. Yes. Phoenix is an area where the weather is almost always good. Um, you know, if you come here in the spring, it the, just absolutely fabulous. And uh, the day my aunt landed was the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And t-shirt weather. Now, it's cold today, but yeah. that day I was running the air conditioner in my car. Yeah. And it was, uh, she was slated to arrive at uh, 9 and we're watching, we're watching, her plane is delaying and delaying. Yeah, because we knew that there was a lot of cancellations and things going on. So, so uh, Naomi was delayed. slated to go get her, but she will tell her own story of why <laughs> she couldn't. So I went over there and Beth said, you know, yeah, I'll go too. And we said, I bet she's hungry. We'll stop somewhere, go through a drive through on the way home and get something to eat. And so she came. Yeah. And... I left, her, yeah. I left her in the car, and I went inside. I arrived... Little did you know. Yes. I arrived at 10-ish, maybe 5 Yeah, because we were 10. watching it, yeah, and they said that her flight so, was delayed. So, yeah, yeah, so I arrived... Yeah, her flight was delayed till 10, and I arrived there shortly after 10. I figured it would take her a minute to get her luggage, get off the plane, you know, that kind of thing. And... I texted pretty quickly. Oh, look, her plane's landed. Yay. You know, as I said, good weather pretty much all year round. Well, one of the things that happens in an area where there's good weather is that when there's not good weather, a lot of planes are landing here. Um, and they can't take off from here. And so I arrived and... Um, let's say the width of the baggage claim area was, let's say it was 30 feet wide. Yeah, probably longer than that, but let's say it was that. There was a line from one end that went all that way and then down halfway the baggage claim. Now there's eight carousels there, mm -hmm. the two on each side, so it's pretty long down. Uh, Phoenix is not the largest airport in the country, but it's a big airport. This line of people were waiting to talk to somebody from Southwest as to whether or not they wanted to grab their bag here or have it go on to their final destination. Although I don't know how those planes would be getting there if the people that were supposed to be on them couldn't, but you know, not my problem. <laughs> and, and so... I figured I would look to see which carousel my aunt's luggage was supposed to come out on and she would eventually be there, you know, so that I could find her. And I found that her luggage was supposed to be out on uh, 8, which was the far end from where I came in. And on the way there, I noticed that to my left... There were about, I don't know, 300 bags with a Southwest person who looked like she was having an incredibly bad day um, trying to work with people to get them their bags, those that had elected to 
you have to admit. And I got to, I got to the eight and I'm waiting there. My aunt shows up, you know, we meet. And there was a whole bunch of luggage already on, on the carousel. And the guy overhead was saying, you know, if you were on such such and such a flight, your luggage is on carousel eight. But it wasn't spinning around. It had been there. Mm. Okay. And uh, and so we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And but it, it didn't say her flight yet. No, it did. Oh. It said her flight before she got off the plane. It said well, it was not spinning, not it going It wasn't around. spinning. And lately I've had an issue with standing for any length of time. My back starts hurting. So I went to go sit down and I'm watching her, watching her, watching her. Nothing's happening. I got up and I went over there when I saw it start turning. And this is maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes after I found her that it started turning. Yeah, and you know, and I'm I got sitting up, out there in the car going... Have you heard from Eve? Did she say anything about Eve? And I got up there to her, and I looked at the little thingy, and it no longer said her flight number on it. Mm. And I hadn't heard an announcement that it was at a different one. So I went and looked at all the other carousels to see if I could find it. Mm -hmm. No. And so then I went to the information place, and I said, can you tell me which carousel the, uh, and I gave him the flight number, is on. And he said, you need to talk to Southwest. There's somebody over there at gate at, at carousel four, the woman that, looking harried with all those bags. They wanted me to go stand in that line, which was almost as long as this other line, yeah. to find out which gate the carousel was on. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> you mean which carousel her flight? Yeah, her, yeah, her, yeah, her, her flight flight. which carousel her luggage was on, and I was talking it over with somebody else that had been on that flight waiting for their bags, and she said, "I'm gonna go see what I can find out." Well, I guess she was pushier than I am, being more Karen-y than I was being, <laughs> and uh, and then you hear an announcement overhead that it was on two. Uh, which was back all the other way. Opposite way. Yeah. So by the time all this happened, I was done standing up again. Now, for it, I just need to sit down for a little bit, and then I can walk around and, you know, be all right for a while, and then, you know. And so I found a chair. I was sitting next to this wonderful woman, and apparently she lives here in Phoenix, and she said, we were trying to get out to uh, Minnesota because her, her husband wanted to go see his dad for Christmas mm -hmm. and their flight had been canceled oh, no. and they couldn't get their luggage back and they live here and they were still <laughs> waiting, <laughs> you know, and, and they didn't know when they would be able to get out. And I continued to wait and continued to wait. Finally, that carousel was going around. Finally. She got her luggage, and we walked out to the car at midnight. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I am so tired. I'm so tired. And Mary Lou had to have been even more so because yeah. she'd been, you know, Traveling doing this for, forever. And forget getting anything on the way back. There was nothing open. It was <laughs> well after midnight before we got to this part of town. And... So we just made sandwiches here, and my aunt goes to bed at eight o'clock, and there she is going to bed at one thirty, two o'clock. <laughs> oh, oh, that 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 ordeal affected her all. You know, yeah, it affected her the yeah. whole time she was here. She was exhausted. Yeah. yeah, and then when it went time for her to go home. I, t I took her, and I always, when I take her to the airport, because, you know, I always get a, a gate pass, um, uh, and so they let me go through security with her, and I told my husband and my, my family, I was like, I'm going to stay with her until 
I see her get go down the jetway because mm -hmm. I last time and it wasn't even a Southwest crisis. I got her to her gate and I was like, okay, you're all set. You know, they'll call pre boarding, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay. And I took off and it was like an hour before her flight. You know mm -hmm. how you do. And I left and then she called me from her destination. She doesn't use a cell phone very well because she's elderly. And she called me from her destination and said, well, you know, it was such and such late because they had to switch planes and they moved us to a different gate. And I felt so awful, but I guess somebody uh, there at the gate kind of took her under their wing and, mm -hmm. and, and made sure she got to the correct gate, you know, with it, everybody was going, you know. And then she told me that someone she met on the plane actually gave her a ride home. Oh, wow. Because she usually calls a, like a bus to pick her up, and if she's not there right at that moment, they they leave, you know. And so they give her they give her it's a very small window. Yeah, and they, and give, so, they give her minutes. So somebody somebody took her home. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Anyway, um, so I was like, no, I'm staying with her. So I, I we didn't mention her. my aunt doesn't drive, so yeah. Yeah. that was very sweet. Yeah. So we. Um, so I was able to stay with her and I kept checking all day and I was terrified and, you know, and, and all the, uh, many of the other flights, uh, to El Paso were canceled, but that one, uh, kept saying it was on and I'm like, I hope the app's not lying to me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I went and, um, it wound up being about 45 minutes delayed, but, um, but it went. <laughs> <laughs> And she called me from, from El Paso that she had gotten her luggage, no problem, and everything. So I was really pleased. That was on Wednesday? I it's, felt so bad yeah. for those Southwest employees. I asked. I, 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 I read a so story. Bad. Hannah sent me a, a, a screenshot of a post from a pilot's wife, I guess, that said that it wasn't just the storms that it was like they had like a computer meltdown or something yeah they're... and that the people you know that the employees were were there and doing their best and that people were being really ugly like you said they've been slapped and spit on mm -hmm. and yelled at and it's like, like how do like, you like, like they control the weather even, that they or <laughs> even if even if you're angry about your missed flight why would you slap another human being or mm -hmm. spit on another human being yeah because they can't get you on no. a flight to go, you know, it's like... Even if it is, even if it is their fault. That's out mm -hmm. of their hands. It, why would you do that to another human being? Yeah. So I was like very... I kind. have to say, I didn't see anybody behaving badly at, at that night at, yeah. at, at the Phoenix thing. There were people that were grumbling, you know, grumbling. Yeah. You know, like... Ugh. But mostly they were just kind of like... Give me my bag. <laughs> Standing in I line see. quietly and I all see. that. I didn't see anybody behaving badly, but okay. they must have been really suffering, those employees. Yeah. I and watched a, um, um, like made for TV, like Netflix movie or something. Um, it was it was some foreign film. It was like filmed in Norway or something because you could, you could see the overdubbing, you know. But it was about a whole bunch of people from different walks of life all trapped at the airport because they, they you know, got to the airport and there was weather and, and they were all having to, you know, huh. like they were, some people were in the lounge, some old man was wandering around the airport getting a lot, you know, didn't speak the whatever language. This one woman was trying to talk to him and she was trying to find out, you know, because in Norway, of course, there's some, there's Norwegians and there's uh, Danish and there's, you know, whatever. And so she's trying all these different languages, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's the same kind of thing. There was all these people from, you know, all walks of life sitting around trapped at the airport basically because you know, they couldn't go anywhere. I think what happened and why people were so angry was that it, that a little bit Southwest blamed the storm, but it wasn't a hundred percent the storm. Mm -hmm. Like it was the storm went and shoved their messy computer system off the cliff basically mm -hmm. is what I understand happened that their that their their system could not handle what happened in us in an efficient way mm -hmm. and I think because I know that like I guess a governor for I mean uh, not a congressperson from here 
like started to question them like this is not because of the storm the storms was days ago and this is still you know everything was so messed up anyway yeah i think it was it was like a lot of factors yeah and, and you I'm know like please southwest for fix yourself for, because i for love her luggage them. for her luggage to be two hours delayed when her flight was was there was there yeah but uh um, the guy was the guy overhead was saying, "We know you're waiting for your luggage. We have thousands of bags here. We're trying to do it." Yeah. And well, I felt bad because I was, you know, while I was researching whether or not her flight out was going to be okay to El Paso, I would look on like because she was flying on Wednesday, so I started to look at Tuesdays, and what I saw was, you know, because sometimes with Southwest. Like, they had some direct flights from here to El Paso, but some of them go to other hubs, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, anything that went to Denver went to Denver, but then didn't go from Denver to El Paso. So I'm thinking, there are people stuck in cities like that, mm -hmm. like, who went to a city like that and then could not get out. And I'm like, that would be a nightmare. And that's why I was. That's why I called you and said, "Do not let her pack her her medication or anything." And, in her and also, because uh, yeah, she said that's against the rules. I have to have <laughs> that with me. Um, people, I think, because it happened at Christmas, were just absolutely yeah going nuts because they couldn't. I love my family. I love my family, but. Being there at Christmas does not make or break Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Naomi's going to talk about a story why we we have not had a full Christmas yet, <laughs> and and you know what? It's okay. <laughs> you yeah. know because our our family is okay. Everybody's okay, and yeah. and we will, and it's all right. And yeah. we went. You know we. <laughs> You do what you can. Yeah. So our our uh, my little girl brought home visitor from <laughs> a very microscopic visitor that prevented us all from getting together. Yeah, she um she she said she told me she was feeling yucky before she left, but she's like, hopefully it's just the weather change. Hopefully it's just this, just that. But then by the time she got home, she was feeling really bad, and she tested positive for COVID, and it was rough because you know. Um, like Eli was really upset because he really wanted to, you know, participate Christmas Eve and mm -hmm. and everything and um and we had plans yeah yeah you know it it, it is just like okay <laughs> it's so sad we, we'll we, miss yeah, you but we just you know. went down and did our own little all four, the four of us thing but you know I realized and not that I don't love you all and I wish we could have been together but also the four of us have never done a lot of mm -hmm. the stuff that we did this weekend like yeah. just have. Well, I was like, you know, you know just when, the four of us. when we were kids and we used to do do uh, Thanksgiving with um, with Dad's family. It was always, you know, the grandma and all the aunts and the mm -hmm. and all the cousins and everything at yeah. my Miriam's house. And so it was, you know, it was a big, you know, thing, and all the kids at the kid table and all the yeah. adults yeah. at the table. I mean, and you want and then, that? And then, yeah. And then at some point, though, we just decided to start doing it at home, and so we had Thanksgiving with. Just our parents and us kids, and and we weren't we weren't all that old yeah. uh, when we started that, but it was nice because then we had all our own you know traditions or whatever, yeah. and it was just our family and our home. And so at some point, you know, you have to you know you change up your traditions or whatever. But but uh, yeah, so every once in a while, it's nice to have you know. And you know, yeah, it was. I mean, I was sad, and I wanted to, like I said, I I, but but at the same time. I was really the, the the thing that really made me sad is that Mary Lou really wanted yeah. to be able yeah. to see you. Yeah, and... I know that was the one thing that was really heartbreaking. So it was nice. I I we had a nice time uh, when I took her to the airport. We we I bought her lunch, a very expensive lunch at the airport. Yeah, I was like, wait, wait what? <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, seventy five dollar hamburger. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, um. So it, but, but, um, so it was good to see you. That was the one thing that was, yeah. Cause I knew like we we're going to get together at, at Rachel's on, on uh, New Year's Eve, but she was going to be there. So, but everybody's negative. 
I never got, none of us ever got it. And she's negative now, so we're all good to go. That's good. The new year, yeah. Oh, the, the, one of the biggest tragedies is that we missed the Nutcracker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so You were sad. so looking I forward to really it. I was really excited about that. I was, we were going to go on Christmas Eve afternoon, one o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, Oh, but they were good. They gave us some, um, they gave us, they put the money, uh, the price of the seats on account for us. They didn't oh, even nice. like that. In I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. So we can use it for next year. They didn't like, <laughs> they're nicer than we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we, they have to really beg and fuss. <laughs> no, cause our policy really, we have a no refund policy. And so, and, and I didn't, wasn't asking for a refund. I was just like, what do you guys, what is your policy? And she, and I thought, she was going to ask us to, like we would have, exchange into another performance this season. Although for COVID, we do we do make we're pretty lenient uh, mm -hmm. on that. We will put money on account. But um, but no, she didn't. I because I was like, well, I guess we can go to another performance. You know, whatever they're doing, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But she's like, no, we can put it on account. And I was like, oh. Yay! So we'll be able to use that towards maybe next year or something. Um, so that was nice, but mm -hmm. I was like, "What?" And I, what did I tell Mark? It's like I really wanted to go, but I've never been. So what's one more year? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, you know what I mean. It's yeah. like the Nutcracker is one of those things that that's the only time they go to the ballet all year. So yeah. if they can't go to that one, they, you know, it's like, what good does it do them? Not you know to be able to go to another well i wouldn't mind going to another performance if that's yeah, what i had but to i mean do, there's but... probably a lot of people that don't want to yeah you know yeah and mom um, you know and the other thing is is that do you remember oh you were too little huh mom used to take us to performance yeah all the you time. said that you were telling that but um you know uh the other thing that you know is that you know they're gonna do it again next year now the only thing is like the only thing you don't know is a few years ago they did not use the symphony Oh. They used to record it. In oh. So if that's the case, I don't yeah. want that. But I, I, you know, anyway, but, um, but that was many, many years ago. We but, went, uh, oh. so I know they're going to do it again next year, you know, so I don't feel so bad about it, but. Yeah, there was, there was one year where, um, there was a big controversy with the, with the, the, um, Arkansas Symphony because traditionally we always do. Uh, the orchestra symphony would, you know, would play in the pit orchestra for the the Nutcracker, and the last year that we had a full orchestra in the pit was was actually when the year that Bill Clinton got elected, mm. because his daughter Chelsea used to dance in the in the ballet company that for you know the the kids that they used uh, for the for the Nutcracker, and I remember. Uh, you know, in the pit orchestra, the place where we, where we usually park for the symphony was all blocked off. And I remember I was grumbling because I had to park across the street. And, I had, you, and know, you were running late. Yeah. And and I got into the pit and and there was a guy standing there who I didn't recognize. And I was like, who's that guy? And then I, and then, and my, my one of my colleagues said, oh, Secret Service, I imagine. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and I looked at him and he was, you know, he had a little, you could see the little cord in his ear, you know, yeah. and, and cause Bill Clinton and, and, and Hillary Clinton were out there in the middle of the, of the <laughs> audience and, you know, people were congratulating and whatever. So anyway, so it was, it, and then like at the beginning of the performance, you know, as we were all, you know, settled in the pit, he, you know, the, the secret service guy was like, you know, is that, who, who's that? Is that yours? You know, like all the cases and things down there in the pit to make sure that we would never have a bomb in our bassoon or whatever. And um, so, yeah. This is but, my bazooka. I mean, yeah. my bassoon. <laughs> <laughs> but then after that, the, um, the, I guess they wanted to use a reduced orchestra to save money. You know, the, the ballet had to pay for the, for the orchestra. So they wanted uh, um, a reduced orchestra or whatever. And I guess there weren't any specific plans for that at the time. And somebody, um, I think one of the percussion players said, oh, I can do a reduction. And, you know, sort of went around the, the you know, the, the process and had come up with some uh, reduction. And 
you know, I guess a percussionist. A percussionist. Say? Yeah, it's a, I don't know what, but he <laughs> had um, he had this reduced orchestra version of the Nutcracker, and so I, he had come to some agreement with the uh, the ballet uh, people, and um, and I guess when the when the symphony found out about it, they're like, yeah, that's not right. And they ended up actually firing that percussionist. I would. And um, and so I remember though. You because know, don't they have contracts? With yeah, them? they're supposed yeah. to. You know, there's channels you have to go through for all that stuff. So so I remember there were ads at the time saying, you know, come and see the Nutcracker with members of the ballet of the of the orchestra symphony, blah blah, blah. like just like they would do every year. I'm like, it was not settled at that point that we were actually going to play with them. Yeah. You know. Wow. And so finally they did, you know, all kinds of machinations. And uh, I think David Itkin was our conductor at the time. So he, he did, um, he had a reduction or something. Mm -hmm. So so from then on, it was like, you know, um, one bassoon player, and, you know, and, and various, you know, one one person on, on uh, playing, whatever. And it was just a, a, a reduced, different arrangement. And I did play it a couple times because I'm a pinch hitter and, you know, but anyway, um, but yeah, so it was, it was, it was a struggle to, to, to find a way to use the, the orchestra, you know, because of that. But, so they used a reduction, but that was the one year that it was up in the air about whether or not they were going to use the symphony. Yeah. They, yeah. Well, the symphony, uh, Phoenix symphony splits every December. Half of them do, uh, Messiah and the other half does Nutcracker. Yeah, that's how that's how Susan and I did it. She did she did the one uh part for the Nutcracker and I did the one part for the Messiah. Yeah. So, cuz well <laughs> at the time too we, uh, Susan wanted to do Nutcracker cuz her her daughters were in the, yeah. the company. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fun. But we missed it. I worked with somebody who did the ballet every year. Um at Cephas. Mm -hmm. Uh, she didn't work in our group, and I don't remember which one she was in. But I worked. Ah. My, my my people would do different art projects, and she wanted a a present to give to all of the dancers that were dancing Nutcracker that her daughter was in. Now I don't know which group she was in, which ballet group she was in. I don't know, but. She came in and she's like, how much is the soap y'all make? Mm -hmm. And I told her, and she said, how much are the candles? And I told her, she goes, I want like, and it was like 80. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, it was all of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was like, uh, okay, by when? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, uh. I just That's got cool. the I got all our people cranking out uh the whatever it was she bought and um so everybody got a check that two week period. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Because when we would sell the stuff, um we wouldn't even take out how much the company had paid to buy the product. Mm -hmm. Uh if they made something, a painting or a candle or soap or whatever, um, and we sold it then they would get the money for that sale. And I had to keep track of who who made what, who sold what. Mm -hmm. But it was uh it was so good to see them when they would get their paycheck. Yeah. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she bought whatever it was for everybody in the in the troops that were, were that were doing Nutcracker. Yeah. I wonder if it was ballet or Arizona or a different school. She had a her her child was fairly young, mm -hmm. not a baby, you mm -hmm. know, but right. but junior high. She wasn't old, you yeah, know. Yeah, but they use little kids. For them. I know Nutcracker uses little kids, but she didn't say all the silk mills do. <laughs> what? Oh. All the silk mills do. How are you sick of that? Yeah. They use little children for that. All the silk mills do. So what I was asking my sister about before That's from is that my mother lit. was a, gr a grade school teacher and they used to have a program where they would take the kids to different performances at Pope Joy. 
sometimes it was ballet, sometimes it was other things. And because she was one of the people that was handling it, she would bring us. <laughs> and, uh, you remember and, she would drive around the neighborhood picking up kids and we had a big station wagon and, you know, back in the days before, uh, Seatbelt laws. <laughs> We're all crammed in the, in the station. I don't wagon. remember. I have no memory of that. Well, you I, I think she stopped little. doing it before you before you came along. Of course, because <laughs> we were really young. Uh, of course, but that was our first exposure to symphony, to ballet, to things like that. Because I knew I had never been to the ballet here, but I knew what it was. I'd seen it before because yeah. I was able to describe it to Robert. Yeah. I'm like, no, really, you will understand what's going on. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we um, when I went to the, I did a stupid. I told Mark mistakes were made. <laughs> I went when I went to the airport with Mary Lou. I forgot to bring a phone charger, and I didn't yeah. know. Like I didn't know. Like, am I going to be there all day? Am I going to be there for half an hour? Mm -hmm. So, I I said, well, I'm going to buy I'm going to buy one. And so I went in, but where we were seated, where we found a seat at the gate, had no plug nearby. You know, yeah. sometimes you yeah. get those those electric benches, right? Mm -hmm. But where we were had no plugs, and I was like, I don't want to go plug my phone in and leave her, you know. Mm -hmm. So they had batteries, and I have it with me because my phone is dying. But I, 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 okay, <laughs> I, the box only showed this solid gold battery. Yeah, well, that's a, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it was it was less than lunch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so. The box only showed this portable battery. And I read the box and I looked at the box and I looked at the back and the front and the front and the back and the side and I looked and looked and read and read and read and nowhere on it, it said what kind of cables it used, but it did not say the that cable. it had a cable. Mm. So it's like, well, I don't want to go sit down and find out that it doesn't have a cable and then I have to come back here and get a cable. So I was like, do you have cable? So I found one. And the cable was probably half the price of the battery. So I was like, well, that's fine. I'll get it. And uh, I go sit down and I open it. Oh, and she and she goes, are you sure this is the cable you want? Because all sales are final. There's no returns or exchanges. And I was like, no, that's fine. I'm smart. <laughs> so I, get, I go sit down and I open the box and it has a cable. <laughs> so I was like, well... I'll use that cable for something else. <laughs> well, you know what? I have, uh, I want to replace the... I spend a little money at the airport. <laughs> I have a, a charging so cable that I keep by where I stitch, and I want to replace it. And, you know, you, you, have, <laughs> <laughs> you have a thousand cables. They come with everything. You have a thousand of them. And when you want to use one, you can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one down here. You know, but I want to keep that one here. The one by my bed, it was just one that I bought, you know, at the grocery store or whatever. And it's always charged really fast. And lately, I'll, I'll plug my phone in and it says charging slowly. Mm -hmm. You know, six hours till... Like, <laughs> yeah, and that's why, you know, that's kind of why I want to replace it. No, so how much How much is that? <laughs> it was $17. Ouch, ouch. Yeah, well, you know, that's yeah. how much they cost. But we were at the airport. it wasn't too bad, actually. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but then that, then the other night you said charging slowly, I actually just, it's a USB-C, it had, it, it's non-directional yeah. and I just turned it you over. You flip it over and it and works And it was like, like two hours. <laughs> and I'm like, then I tried it last night and didn't do that. So I think mm. it is getting toast. So I may use that new one I bought. It's, yeah. If well, it's long enough. I tried a, a, one of the cables to charge Mary Lou's and it didn't do anything. So I said, maybe it's persnickety like my iPad. Oh, your iPad. <laughs> and I used that one. It worked fine. <laughs> your, your iPad is snooty. <laughs> it, it would well, not take my, my regular, you know, my... It had to be the iPad charging cord. Me, me. Well, you know, my, my tablet, I've been fighting with it. I've been wary of it lately because, because the, the charging cable... Uh, like the little receptacle thing, the the 
charger comes out of it too easily. Mm-hmm. Like, and you try to plug it in and you get that little message, like, hey, you took your charger, blah, blah, you know. It's charging, but it's not, you know. It's a churro. Yeah. And Is it so, a USB micro or USB-C? It's a C. USB-C. And, um, but, you know, Snug regularly lo- knocks it down. So I'm, I'm like trying to find, I try to find a place to put it. But like he, he gets in that little, uh, that bin and he, and the cords are there and he gets himself tangled up in the cords and then he jumps down and knocks my phone or my tablet or whatever is plugged in, you know. And so, so I think I want to like rearrange that area to, you know, but, um, I dropped my tablet while it was charging, not my iPad, my other tablet, while it was charging. And now I have to mm-hmm. tilt the charger <laughs> in order to, in order to get it to charge. And so I have it in there and I put it back under around to make sure it stays. <laughs> what, I, what I find sometimes is like, if I squeeze my tablet, like, <laughs> you know, then it seems to make contact that, you know, but like the, but I, I, did try put it because I have a, a a cord like that where you have it's it's long and it's covered with cloth and all that so it's you know more uh, resilient or whatever and I had it on my computer desk for a while and I would you know because I keep it there so I could charge my phone while I'm on the computer or whatever um, and I just switched it out for the the charger that came with my tablet because there's nothing wrong with the charger mm. but it's but it's, it's the jack but. Is it, you think it's the jack? Mm-mm. It's well, it's the it's yeah the, the receptacle inside the That's tablet. What I'm yeah, yeah, the jack. And so and so um, so I have that charger from the tablet over on my computer desk, and the one that I bought, um, that, it's really really long and unwieldy for my bedroom, but it's but it works better I think, mm-hmm. and it it you know it seems to fit a little tighter or whatever. But, um, but, and it's a good core too. It charges very quickly. If I can get the, the plug to, you know, to plug in there. So when I was driving Uber, people would get in the car and ask me for a charger. The second they sat in the car, (laughs) right? And, and, uh, I don't have an iPhone. So I don't have an iPhone charger. Sorry. I didn't. And I had a woman get in the car and wanted an iPhone charger. And I said, I don't have an iPhone charger. She goes, well, I'm going to have to cancel this ride and get somebody who has one. <laughs> That's not even Stupid. a thing you can ask for. Yeah. <laughs> like on Uber, you can't be like, I want an Uber X with an iPhone charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. I said, good luck with, good luck with that. She goes, well, my phone is dying. I'm like, good luck with that. Because, <laughs> That doesn't mean there's going to be somebody else near enough for her to get there before her before phone dies. her phone dies. Mm-hmm. You know, you're already in the car going where you need to. She goes, "Well, I have to use my phone because I need it for business." I'm like, "Then you should have a charger with you. Yeah, you buy a battery." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but I, I was I told just. Mark, I told Mark, well, "This will be my knitting my knitting bag battery." <laughs> well, you know, I, I did buy one eventually, uh, but. I, people rarely asked, but I think it got used one or two times, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's kind of like, your lack uh, of planning does not constitute my emergency. I <laughs> have some place you can plug in a charge, a, a charger. But if it's so important for business, don't you even have a cord Yeah. to say like, I have a cord. Can I plug it in? Yeah. Right. That would be no issue. I have a double thing and it's like, okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did that all the time for people. That's how uh, my my physical therapist. Uh, she goes, you know what? I I I'm getting a FedEx package with my phone in it. <laughs> she said I was back home in Denver visiting her family, and she was using. Uh, she was charging her phone in the in the Uber on the way to the airport, oh, no. and she just got out. <laughs> and oh. she's like, I left my phone in the Uber. Oh man! And and uh, but some she was other able, town. huh? In some other town. In some other town. Oh. Uh, and she was able to contact him and say, you know, I need, I can't, I need my phone. He goes, I'll she didn't it. chase it down with Life three hundred and sixty like I did. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, because she was on a plane. Yeah. I have a I have a uh, a, a plug, you know, that, that goes on the wall that has a, a USB, you know, thing in it. Yeah. But it's it's uh it's shaped like a shark mouth. Yeah. So when you plug it in, it looks like there's a shark holding your holding your. <laughs> so last night, plug. I'm so glad my my screen protector did did its job because <laughs> I was in the bathroom. Oh, first of all, I had I saw a post from my a friend of mine who's like, if you need me, contact my husband because my phone's sitting in rice. And so I said, <laughs> what did you do? She goes, it was in my back pocket and I dropped it in the toilet and, I, and then I peed on it. <laughs> You know what? I think I need a new phone. <laughs> I, know. I was like, okay. But anyway, I did not drop it in the toilet. But I put it on the counter. And with my my sleeve, I guess, of my new jammies that are very comfy that Mark got me. Um, they, I knocked the phone off. And, and it's fallen a thousand times on the tile. But this, the mm -hmm. way it fell in particular, the screen protector popped off. And I picked it up and it was shattered. It was in one piece, but it was completely cracked. But my screen was not. So I was like, oh, thank goodness, thank goodness. Yeah. But, uh, but I was like, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. If I was like, if my phone blows up, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. But. Well, like when, when I was, it was at Robert's birthday and I was heading to uh, Los Dos Molinos and uh, I wasn't quite sure exactly where it was, and I'm on the freeway with the GPS thing going on my phone, not the phone I have now, on my phone, and it just turned off. I remember your phone used to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why I got a new one. It, <laughs> it, it, it would work fine for a while, and then all of a sudden it would just turn off. Not overheating turn off, just would turn off. And I can't deal with it driving on the freeway. Nope. And I called her and I said, tell me really quick. I got it to restart. And I, I said, tell me real quick how I can find it. Because I don't know if my phone's going to last. And uh, I need to, you know, the restaurant is delicious. But the location that we often go to, not the one that DoorDash wants us to have. But because as the crow flies, the other one's closer. But... No, we're that not one, crows. Yeah, we're not crows. That one is a little hole in the wall that if you blink too fast, like her hand surgeon, if you blink too fast, you will pass it. Mm -hmm. I passed her doctor twice taking her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was it. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're so reliant on these stupid things. I was using it one time, uh, the, the second time, and I still passed it because it is a little driveway in a building that has yep. no signs. Yep. And you're like, uh, yep. yeah. So, and Beth, yeah. the first time, Beth was giving me directions, and I said, Are we going the right way? Are we going? I think so. I don't know. It's twirling around. Yeah, because my phone was like, it was saying, Oh, you know, it's just the, you know, 1.3 miles away or whatever. And I'm like, this direction? Like, this direction? <laughs> and it, yeah, and, it, and, it, and then it was like showing, like, because I think we had already passed it. And so it was like trying to show us directions to, to turn, turn around or something. Yeah. And it was just like, I couldn't I couldn't make head or tails of what it was saying. Well, the worst is when, uh, when I took Hannah to um, Boston University Tanglewood Institute, it's in Western Massachusetts, but Ooh. you fly into Al into Albany. And Albany, I don't know if any of you live in Albany, <coughs> but out by your airport, y'all need streetlights. Okay? <laughs> it was so dark. I had, you know how when it's that dark? <coughs> Excuse me. You just have no, you just can't orient yourself. And, um... And also, you all need uh, some more um, cell signal. <laughs> because, well, and this was 2015, so maybe uh, maybe it's better now. But I get out of the airport in a rental car. I don't know where I'm going. I have no idea. And my my Google Maps is going, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know where you are either. <laughs> I'm like, 
please get some signal, please get, because I am driving out of the airport and I have no signal and I don't know where I'm going. It's very nerve wracking. So one of the times that I was, for me to have a map. One of the times that I was driving um, Uber, I was leaving the airport. I had picked up somebody and I'm on the 202 going east in the morning, which is bad enough as it is with normal sunlight, but certain times of year it is hitting you here mm -hmm. and the sun can be intense in here. the morning or the evening in the morning oh, i was okay. heading east and i said i can't see the signs of which road i'm passing and i need you to tell me if i i said i think i know where i am but i need you to tell me if you see a sign for such and such because that would be the one before i would have to get off from here right I said, I can see the cars. I can see that there is a sign, but to me, it is black. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I said, can you see the signs? Can you read them? And he's like, yeah, yeah. You know, because he was more in the shade. Right. right. You know, he goes, I can, I can see them. And he goes, this one says this. This one says that. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. Because I couldn't see. And um, <laughs> since then, I got... Uh, another pair of glasses that is uh, sunglasses that have that have the my prescription in them because normally uh, before that I had transitions and it doesn't work in the car but even then with certain light you cannot uh -huh. see well how about this I was driving in my very fancy new see uh, uh, my new uh, what do I have? CX-5, my Mazda. And it's got, you know, traffic. It's got, like, you know, the stopping and the and the lane assist and and uh, all that stuff. You know, it's got that big computer thing in the windshield. And so, you know, if you're not stopping fast enough, it'll warn you and all that. You know, super fancy safety issues, right? I'm driving at the opposite bit part of day at sunset and early evening and the sun is blinding you where the cars are basically shadows and I was driving like that on the freeway for quite a while and then all of a sudden I even took a picture of it with my phone my phone my car goes safety things are turned off such a, I don't know what it said I can't remember now exactly but basically the sun blinded my car <laughs> I and I'm like, you're telling me that if you can't see and I can't see, who can see? <laughs> like I can't see, so I was kind of relying on you to help me see my little fancy car. And if you are also blind, this is not a good time to be driving. Uh, well, I remember when I um, uh, used to live in Little Rock, and I would drive home for Christmas. There was always a section. A section of Oklahoma City where they had I guess they had redone the freeways and and this is before I had you know look at Google Maps on my phone I had um, a GPS uh, like a TomTom -tom for my car and even though I knew the way home very easily it was all I-40 all the way from Little Rock to Albuquerque and I had driven that route a thousand billion times so you know I knew all the little you know I had like the towns that I regularly stopped in to gas up and to eat and whatever but I always had the Tom Tom on anyway and but there was a section in Oklahoma City where they had redone the freeways and the Tom Tom would get lost because you know I'd be going through and all of a sudden it's you know going it's showing me like you know green fields and this and that and, and, and it's like Trying to find it, so it's turn going like this and going like that and going, you know, you and you were just like. Around. When we went to the Newsboys concert in in Tucson, uh, uh, Kathy, uh, yeah, Kathy's yeah. husband was driving, I uh -huh. think, and they were using the GPS to find the stadium where the concert was going to be, and it was going ballistic because there was all this construction, so you couldn't go. The way it thought you should go yeah. you know now the gps goes and it knows all of that and routes you in a different way yeah because but because nobody used to actually update those things that yeah. we were supposed to remember well, you were supposed to 
go on and update it before you went. Yeah. One time I went, uh, um, I was going through some town and they were doing construction there. And so, you know, like it had, you know, all the traffic diverting to, to the other side of the freeway, right? And so, so normally, you know, this traffic, the westbound traffic would be here and the eastbound traffic would be here. And they had you all going on the westbound side or whatever. And so my top comms were going, get out of this lane, get out of this lane. Yeah. <laughs> like you were going the wrong way on the, on the freeway or something. The wrong way driver. Like, yeah. <laughs> my dad it's used okay. to call the GPS. Ment la, mentirosa? No. <laughs> oh. La, la, la in, what? La, entrema. Entrema. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the interrupter. <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember exactly how it said. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I have the sound turned off on Waze yeah. because, uh, you know, if I'm listening to the radio or, you know, an audio book or something, I don't want it telling me, turn around, turn around. <laughs> Yeah. Left now, yeah. but I could have used that this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Mm. Okay. Blue Sophie. Very nice. <laughs> well, I think we better wrap it up because yes. I gotta go home and cook dinner. Yeah, we got started a little late today. Because, yeah, because we, we forgot, forgot it was Thursday. <laughs> today <laughs> I was like I was sitting at actually because my daughter had an eye appointment today and I was sitting at lunch with her and I was like oh no wait a minute because I was like I have to work tomorrow and then it's the then it's New Year's Eve and I was like oh, wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I texted well, them like, yeah I was like, yeah I was I had gone to to get my to get my follow-up appointment and I was like Oh yeah, I forgot too. <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot what because we were just thinking, oh well, we have you know, we have to go, you know, to get those things mailed, we have to go to this appointment and we had you know, blah blah blah. Well I basically had no sleep while Mary Lou was here. Yeah. Every time every time <laughs> yeah, my she aunt was sleeping came here out of in the, the living room and every time my aunt came out of the room or talked to me from some other room than where I was, the dog would go bananas. <laughs> and so every time she got up to go to the bathroom. She started barking and yelling. And I mean, just was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty dog. Well, every we're time, so cool. Every time the, cat, the dog barked, the cat's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for spending the new year with yes. us. And uh, thanks for another great year. Happy and New Year. Happy New Year. And we hope you all are healthy and happy and having a good holiday week. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.